In this episode of Forklift Ownership we are going to take out the uh, tilt cylinders and do an overhaul on each of them individually. So these ones are uh, piped together which I assume most of them are so there's like a, a hose that comes off the valve body and it tees off to each of them so they're always equal pressure so uh, you need to do some things to protect yourself from that. So I put some blocks of wood down underneath the uh, mast. I don't know if you can see that or not. But uh, right at the, the base of the mast I put some uh, 4x6's and I kind of put the mast in a relatively neutral position, kind of vertical, where it's sitting on these blocks of wood so that when I crack the hydraulic line on this uh, cylinder the mast doesn't swing some great angle either in either direction and spray oil everywhere. It may still do that to my surprise, but hopefully not. And other than that, you're going to need a uh, rebuild kits. I got these from Helmar. We'll get into that later and see what the heck is in there. I got some Parker O-ring lube. I don't know if they make this or not anymore, but you need to lube your O-rings and whatnot before you put it in. You need a uh, some brake cleaner. You should have like a a tray to work on as well. It would be nice to have like a transmission table or something where it has like a a drain in the middle and just take the fluid away into a pail. And uh, if you're going to get to get this style of uh, a tray to work on, I find as you're beating on it and marks it, I haven't put any holes through it yet, you can get some uh, rubber ones as well and then it would be good to have two of them. So you have one under the machine for when you crack the hydraulics and then have like an operating table once you get the uh, cylinder out. So there's uh, two pins holding in the uh, hydraulic cylinder. So I've got a, a slide hammer for drawing this pin out. You could probably get it out without a slide hammer. It'd just be harder. Then it's 14 millimeter heads for the uh, keepers and uh, 19 millimeter for the hydraulic fittings. So I've started to clean things off a little bit, make it a little more tidy. If you look at uh, the far side, if we can, it's pretty nasty. So you want to try to do this as clean as possible. You might want to open the vent on your hydraulic tank if there's any, see if there's any pressure in there, otherwise that could give you a surprise. I'm not worried about it on this machine, but on other machines it, it could be possible. So I think I've got enough workspace to do this job, so I guess we will uh, start pulling it apart. You can listen to that soothing dog barking in the background. It would be nice, nice if I could break open the uh, cylinder before I took it out, but this shroud is in the way of doing that. Yeah, I guess I will uh, try to get a pin out first before I crack the hydraulics. That should make it less eventful. I'll leave the bottom pin in just so I can crack the hydraulics without having too big of a fight. This machine really had not ever been. <sighs> Never been greased. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to close the door here. I'm going to make a big racket. Doing this, I think I'll try to knock this in a bit with the sledgehammer to crack the uh, rust. Because if I use a 10 pound sledge to hit it in, that's a lot more whacking ability than I've got with this. You get the idea. So if I use a, a heavier one, actually I do have a heavier one. Let's see what I do, but uh, we'll get that thing out of there somehow. So obviously trying to pull a blind pin out is not going to be easy. If you're just doing it by hand, you'll need some kind of a tool. And uh, I can start getting the uh, keepers out on this side and 
this pin drives through. There's like a, a grease fitting location underneath of it that you can use to do that. And then most of the filth on this machine has originated from these tilt cylinders. I wish the previous owner had done something about it, other than just filling up the oil. Because it runs down this part of the, uh, I don't know what you call it, a unibody? It's a, kind of the frame and everything, right? The chassis. Obviously you gotta lift the floorboards to get down into here. Got those loose, not a big deal. All right, I guess, uh, yeah, like I said, I'll start working on that other pin and we'll get back to this. All right, so it looks like you need 10 pounds to move this pin. So I used the 10 pound sledgehammer and hit that pin and it moved in just a touch for me, which is good. Now I think this is like a, a 10 pound or more slide hammer here, so this is a bit heavier, heavier duty than the first one I was using. So stand back, you don't know what's going to happen. Hopefully more of it. Got that pin out, no problem. That's accessible now. So I can drive out uh, the bottom, but I'm gonna crack the hydraulic lines first. I don't know if we can really see that or not. Yeah, I guess so. Until I get standing in the way. Okay, that's a swivel on there. Losing some fluid. Swivel there. Losing some more fluid. But not a no geysers. Yeah. Alright. So I think you get the idea. I'll get these things disconnected and try to catch as much fluid as I can. Then we will get on to the next stage. Got the hydraulic lines disconnected, I'm kind of catching the oil as it rolls down the frame rail there. So now you'll need a hollow drift to reach over the uh, grease fitting. I got this, uh, my trusty two pound hammer. We'll see how I get this out. Say it's hesitant. Need a bigger hammer. Now it's awkward. I did remove the uh, plate on the other side. Maybe I need to give it a bit of precision in the other direction as well. It's just a bit of a nuisance having this brake fluid here. All right, it's definitely moving now. We're in business. It's going the wrong direction. How annoying, it's brake fluid. I don't want to get it damaging anything. There. That's it, need a 10 pound hammer for this job. Or you need to be stronger than me.
Your choice. Here's the other pin, so you can clean that off. It's got a bit of wear on it, but not terrible. Now you might be tempted to squish the cylinder down to get it out, but if you do that, you're gonna have oil flying everywhere. So I would not do that. So we got the cylinder out. I just have to run it back and forth to get the oil out into a catch container and then clean it off. Then we'll start looking at pulling it apart. Cylinder's all cleaned up on the outside now. We've got the oil out of it. So there's a five millimeter Allen key holding this collar on. So we'll take that out. Here's the grub screw here. That should be out far enough. Then there's 22 millimeter holding this uh, skirt on here. That went pretty good. Somehow I have to thread this thing off of here. I assume it, yeah. Open it a little. And there's the predicament. How do you hold on to this thing without damaging it? Hmm. If you had a vice, obviously that would help a bit. I think we'll probably poke away at this a little bit and then I'll cut off and uh, with it me being successful, that's the only option. Oh, that's not bad. Okay. This collar is not even attached to it. It's kind of questionable. How is this holding? All right, so I'll get that thing off of there. Hopefully you can see it and it wasn't blocking the view by just using that big uh, water pump plier with the vice grips seems to be working, so I'll carry on with this. Well, I got that end turned off of here and I guess I got to hammer this through here, which is probably rusted for four inches. So I've taped a brass slug here so that I can hammer on the end of this without botting them out the cylinder. Then I got a, a chunk of brass here and I think it's a four pound hammer and we'll see what happens. This is going to be tricky. Yeah, I already lost that piece of brass. So basically, I'm probably not going to film this. It's going to be friggin' miserable. But somehow, I am going to get that collar off of that cylinder because there's no way of rebuilding it until that collar is off. So we will be back after my uh, fooling around gets this thing off of there. Not a big deal in the end. So I just stood this up on the floor, had my chunk of brass in here, slugged on the top with this, and it separated. Ah. So I guess the next step is to try to get this thing apart. So I like to grab onto the cylinder 
where it's not actually part of the cylinder bore. So you can grab that onto in a vise. We can put the gripper on here. And you could use like uh, this style of the wrench here. And we'll see. Again, this is more like struggling at this point to get this thing apart. But it's actually turning, so that's nice. So anyway, I'm going to have to get the end of the cylinder off. I have a probe in it to see if there's any snap rings or anything in there, but I don't think that matters quite yet. But uh, I'll keep using this uh, spanner wrench to get that thing off. That's an Armstrong. You kind of need the whole gamut of sizes. I think there's like five sizes or something. Some of them are square, some of them are round. There's various diameters of cylinder that they're designed to grab onto. Remember, I have a successes today. So I used the uh, spanner wrench for a bit. It was sort of chipping the edge of the cylinder. So I just used a, uh, a wide chisel and pounded on it a couple times and got it to move. So now there's like two parts, right? You've got your cylinder, then you've got the packing. So you can pull them out one at a time or whatever you want to do. So it's a double acting cylinder, so it has the opposite on each end of it. No fastener on the end, so I have to pry those things off of there. And then you've got the, the packing part again. It looks like it's got a couple layers of stuff in there. I see a snap ring kind of fossilized in here as well. It'll have some uh, bushings that you don't change. So at this point, you're gonna inspect things, take some pictures, see so if you, you don't put it in backward. When I did my power cylinder, I actually put in the uh, part that goes against the cylinder in backwards, so I had to take that off and redo it. It was faster the second time anyway. Clean out the cylinder, make sure it's clean and not all pitted. And you decide what you're going to do if it is. You can get these re-chromed. I don't know about the cylinders. If they just cut it off and put a new cylinder on or what they might do. So I'm going to do the uh, cleaning and inspecting stage of things. Get that snap ring out of there and then start seeing what it's going to take to uh, get this apart. And of course you're going to verify against your rebuild kit and make sure you've got the uh, correct rebuild kit. I think we'll tackle the uh, ram here first. So it looks like from the beginning appearances that there's three parts. There's some kind of a, a wear ring that's split in half. And then there's these two plastic uh, seal pieces. So we will uh, get these out of here. So that's off. Now these parts, they're facing out. Like the uh, inside exposed part is facing away. Ooh, I don't know how much you can see. I'm just trying to get this pick under here without scratching everything. See if there's anything underneath of it or not. Alright, so I guess we're going to take one off on the other direction. I didn't see anything under it. When I did the uh, power cylinder, it had, a, I think it had an o-ring underneath of these, but there's not enough. And as per usual, there's more parts than appears to be necessary. So uh, I'll get that thing apart, and then we'll uh, struggle to get a part back on it, I guess. We'll make an honest attempt to try to get this thing on here, on camera. I did the first one, it wasn't a big deal. You just kind of get it started and uh, pull on it with both hands. Oh, 
Hopefully it doesn't roll and end up backwards. We're good. All right, snap that on. So I'll have to put some uh, Parker lube on it. I will say that the uh, pick was a bit aggressive. It will scratch this uh, shaft. So you should probably grind it down or you can get picks that have spoons on the ends of them. So I can take this and put it aside. And now to work on this part here. So clearly the first thing we'll do is take off this o-ring. And again, like if you had the spoon, it wouldn't be quite as uh, harsh on things. You almost need to use a, uh, a caliper on these and see the dimensions of them and see which one goes where. Because uh, to the eye it's hard to tell which one is which. But I'll put those over there. And uh, I guess i got to get that part out, which I'm not prepared to do. I need a screwdriver to leverage that thing out. It's basically just like a, a conventional kind of seal, but heavy, heavy duty. There's some kind of a split thing here. It's split on an angle. It's kind of interesting. That goes in there. Then the, this wiper thing goes in there. Making that thing kidney shaped seems like it'd be a nightmare. So I'm hoping that somehow this snap ring is underneath of there and I can slide them all out and do this easily without a great battle. So we'll find out in a minute. I'm sure the professionals are about to shake their heads at this, but I want to drive that seal out through the front. If I had a slide hammer that could grab onto a screw, I could just pierce that seal with a screw and pull it out with the slide hammer, but I don't have that option right now. So let's see how this goes. It's starting to come, so I need to force this out without marring the uh, shaft area of this uh, component. Got it. All right, so the next step is to poke around in here. All right, I see the snap ring now. So I'll have to get my snap ring tool out and get that out of there. And I think this will actually be relatively easy to work on, so that's pretty good. Yeah, so the snap ring is just right there and easy to access, so uh, I guess we'll get it out and then we'll get on to the next scene here. Several days have passed since the last scene, so at the end of that day, I cleaned up all the components and had stopped because I couldn't find uh, my Lang snap ring tool. Do not buy this kind of snap ring tool. They don't... It's just like soft steel. It doesn't dig into the uh, snap ring very well. And the snap ring is gone. I'm never going to see it again. I'm glad there's another one in the kit. I'll be very careful not to lose it. I have not determined what this wire is for. Like if it's supposed to be used against the snap ring or what the heck it does. But anyway, the snap ring is out and uh, this next ring looks like it's swaged in there and cannot come out and underneath of it there's a stack like this. So it looks like I'm going to get this piece out which has a split in it and then get the uh, next part out after that. So we'll just reach in here with the pliers and try to fish some parts out of here. Yeah, I can find the edge of it. It's kind of fiddly work. I'll have to be much more gentle putting in the new one. So that's got to be why <clears throat> there's a, uh, a cut in it. The uh, cut is much steeper on the original part than the uh, replacement. I'll tell you that right away. Now we've got to get this other part into a kidney shape somehow. Oh, we can make a slider over it down at the back. That would be convenient. Oh, perfect. Okay, 
and I'll put it back in the same way. There's a bit of filth in here, so I'm going to have to do some cleaning. They really don't want that thing flying out of there, probably because it's a pretty high pressure. So I'm going to shut this down here, get things cleaned up, and then we'll start putting it back together. All cleaned up, time to lube up this uh, seal. This stuff is something else. I never <laughs> encountered grease that's so sticky like this. And like the, the tension on it is impressive. So anyway. Hopefully it behaves. It's getting a little bit cooler here now. Time of year. I think we're going to get it. No problem. Okay. So I'll smush that into position. Okay. Get this thing in here. Seems relatively understandable how it might work. What am I not understanding here? Ooh, that looks like an option. Don't give you much space. We're gentle, I think we'll get her. Pretty close. I'm sure someone has done this before knows exactly the trick to get this thing in here. It's kind of fun to try to figure it out though. Pretty close, I don't want to wreck it. We're going to get it. Just a bit of a turn away. You can see it's touching now. It's probably got to pop it in in there. Got it. Not bad. in pretty level. wonder if that helps somehow. got to wonder. It's a pretty stiff, stiff one.
I'm going to keep my thumb on this snap ring so I don't lose it. Yeah, these seem like a good idea, but they're just frustrating. Good bite from this thing. Right out. Snap rings in all the way. Next step, drop in the seal. I'll have to find a socket or a driver to put that in. So we'll do that next. Got a 36 millimeter socket here. I'm sure everything's gonna fly off the table. We'll give it a try. Bad start. It's going. Not all the way in, but we are in a good position. So that's set up. Actually, a little bit proud over here. I'm just looking across here. I'll tune that up a little bit. I did mar up the uh, edge of this when I was getting the uh, seal out initially. So you can just go over it with a file and clean that up so that uh, it doesn't damage the shaft because it's like a chrome shaft you wouldn't want to scratch it and cause a leak. So I'll get that sort of tidied up and then we'll do the uh, major reassembly. So let's see how much of a struggle this is. So I feel like I've got everything lubricated and ready to go. I got the uh, piston end lubricated, opening of the uh, cylinder bore, then this part here. I think I'll put this on last. I don't think I need it to help aim things in. So I've got a uh, piston ring com compressor if I need it. I really don't know how bad this is going to be. It might be simple. I kind of would like to use it just to protect this from the threads. I don't know if we can fit that in there or not. I have not done this in quite a while. Like 20 years. Or more. <laughs> don't want to cut anything. So that's the one concern is with the nylon type seals. I don't want it to get sliced. Is there enough space? I would say no, there's not enough space for that. We're just going to have to be careful, which is never good. At least we try. Enough. All dramatic for nothing. Okay. Again, the threads are a concern on the end of the shaft. You can still see that. I guess we're not quite.
All right, threading was going good. So I just used my, uh, oh, whatever the wrench there is called. Why not thing in, use a chisel to set it. So we'll uh, get that done and then get on to the next scene. Got this part back on here, got it cleaned up. It looks like this will screw onto about here and then this moves out. I think what you use this for is to adjust the cylinders so when it's all the way back, it's not twisting the uh, mast. So we'll have to look at that later on as to how that works. So you get the idea. So I'm gonna wind that back on where I think it was. And I'll set this uh, screw down on here. It had like a chunk of plastic underneath of it, which I removed. But now that I look at this, it looks like it probably should have been there because it goes up against the threads. So I would say don't take that out. It's not going to be uh, the end of the world. But uh, it'll mark up the threads, but you're never going to run this thing down that far anyway. So it's not terrible. So I'll get that put back on and then I think we'll start putting it into the machine after that. In preparing to put the uh, cylinder back in, I did grease the uh, slides here and the pins that are going in in both locations. I've already put some new grease through these pins, well for that pin and the other eye, because the grease had turned into wax essentially being in there so long. And I'd sanded them down with a bit of sandpaper as well, like 320 grit. So now we're going to fish the cylinder in. It turned out it was pretty easy to know how far to put this on because once it hit the rusty threads it just stopped. So I'm not too concerned about it being out of position compared to the previous. It seems like it's going to be just naturally this one first. There's no spacers, so it's off by about a quarter inch on each side, side rather. There are some like uh, sintered bronze bushings in here, so it'll be gentle. I think we're gonna go all right. No problem. Not gonna go too far. I need to get this plate in correctly. Should have done that before I drove it into the other side. I mean, I'm going to turn that without making a big mark on it. I might have to get the puller out and I'll pop it out a little. Interesting. Let's see if we can tap this thing into place. That's regrettable. <laughs> I'll have to fish that out of the frame rail there. All right, so there you learned something. So don't put that all the way in until you have it lined up with the uh, pins. And then I will do the same on the other side, but I'll do it better on the other end. Then I will hook up the hydraulic hoses and I'll give this thing a shot. Retrieved the plate and uh, got it started. Got the uh, two bolts in. So rather than trying to draw this thing in with these bolts, 
we'll just tap it into place. That's good. So again, that's uh, 14 millimeter for these guys. Then I'll do the same, like I said, just wanted to show you that little technique. Cylinder's all greased up and hooked up, so I think we're going to call it a success. I am not going to run the machine because I need to do the other side and I don't want to get the oil back in the hoses on that side. So I guess uh, we're going to wrap it up here. So I think the biggest tool that you're going to need is the slide hammer to get the pin out of the front, out of the mast. Aside from that, it's a, a pretty simple job. Having a, a nice snap ring plier would be good as well. And uh, that's about it. So thank you for watching.